Hi everyone, it's Melissa, and today is the start of the Library Love Readathon. I am co-hosting this with many other people. I will link everyone below, but I am going to be vlogging my reading this week. Initially, I was going to at least try to do one prompt from every host. However, I found out a few days ago that I am going to be judging the first round of the booktube prize which is uh, February March and I want to make sure I leave a really good chunk of time to read those six books so I've decided that I am just going to vlog this first week and I'm not going to, going to be able to do something from everyone's prompt but I'm going to get to as many as I can so I'm going to go over my pile of possibilities so I did try to be strategic. I have one book that fits a couple of prompts and I have um, I have opted to do some of the like non-book media um, for some other prompts. So for Naomi, um, one of her prompts was to um, borrow a show, like a TV show or a movie from the library. And I have found one that was on my, if you remember, I made a new to me movies I want to watch this year because I just rewatch movies and I never watch anything new. Um, this is a very old movie, but I've never seen it. Uh, the Fugitive. I got this one because I know my husband will watch it with me. So that's definitely happening, happening this week. The next prompt is from Rainy and one of hers was to read a play or watch a recorded production. Last year I read Hamlet for the first time and I mentioned how I really want to, um, watch the play. I've never seen the play before. And so my library had a copy of the Royal Shakespeare Company production of Hamlet, the one with David Tennant and um, Sir Patrick Stewart. For Kate Howe, I chose the prompt Epic Quest, which was to go basically browse the shelves at your library and find something um, intriguing. And my library <laughs> had been closed um, because of COVID cases. And so I went on the app and browsed some eBooks and found this one. A Little Devil in America, Notes in Praise of Black Performance by Hanif Adurkib. And what intrigued me about this, well, first of all, I think the topic is very interesting. Um, but what really intrigued me was the cover, which you can see there are two people dancing. They are definitely, I can tell, <laughs> dancing the Lindy Hop, which is a dance that I dance and haven't danced in two years. So I realize the book isn't about Lindy Hop. It's about all sorts of black performance, but even if it's just mentioned briefly, I think I will enjoy that and um, pine over the fact that I haven't been able to dance it in so long. So that's for Kate. Um, Stephanie, which one did I choose for her? Cat or Dog on the cover. And I found a middle grade book. Um, I can get through middle grade fairly easily, so I thought that might be good for a readathon. And it's called I Can Make This Promise. And I will put the cover here so you can see there is in fact a dog on the cover. Um, for Catherine, I chose the prompt Try Something New. And this has been on my radar forever, Gender Queer by Maya Kobabe. And the newness about this is I have never read anything from an author who uses neo pronouns. And I don't really, I don't really understand neo pronouns. Not to say that I would disrespect someone to like not use their pronouns obviously I would but I just like I don't understand it and I would like to understand um what neo pronouns are all about because I just don't get it so I thought that was a good pick for try something new so gender queer it's a graphic memoir for Tiffany's prompt set in a different country I'm already reading regeneration which is a world war one um fiction um I'm reading this as part of a read-along so I thought that would be great because it's definitely not set in Canada. So for Petra, I chose the prompt Continuous Series. And for that prompt, I chose The People of Sparks. This is the follow-up to City of Ember. I read a couple years ago. It's a middle grade, post-apocalyptic dystopian type of thing. And uh, I really like City of Ember a whole lot. So I'm very eager to continue on with that series. For Jessica and Chelsea, I was able to find a book that hit two, two prompts. So Jessica, two people on the cover. And for Chelsea, it was a woman in period costume with back turned. Um, so I will put the picture here, but it's Dear Mrs. Bird. Fits both of those prompts. And for my own prompt, um, about language, a book about language, 
um, I want to read Cultish, but it's still on hold. The ebook is still on hold, so it's probably not going to come in time. City of Ember, and I really liked this. I don't think I liked it as much as City of Ember, but I think it definitely held its own. I like the conflict in it. Because it's middle grade, I think the messages were like a little heavy-handed, but I can forgive it that. Um, I didn't find the setting as interesting in this book, and I missed the kind of like mystery-solving element of the first book that was absent here, which that was the most disappointing part because there was something that happens in this book that could have been a really big mystery, but it's kind of like solved immediately. And I was like, oh, like that could have been a lot better. But overall, I liked the conflict piece. I liked um, the people from the city of Ember. Like I kind of like liked their continuing story. I'm trying to like not give away stuff in case someone wants to pick up the first book. And for my next book, I am going to pick up Gender Queer by Maya Kobabe. And I will check back when I've made some progress. So I finished Gender Queer by Maya Kobabe. And I really enjoyed that. Um, it was a really good mix, I think, of the text kind of explaining how the author was feeling during like childhood and adolescence and struggling with gender identity and sexuality. Um, it was a good mix of the, the text explaining those feelings and the pictures kind of depicting those inner feelings when explanations just don't carry as much weight. So like seeing those pictures I think um, helped as well. So it covers the author's kind of discovery of or kind of wading through the, the reads to discover that you're non-binary and um, asexual. So I really liked that and I think it kind of helped me understand a little bit better about non-binary experience. Not that this is like every non-binary person's experience but um, one type of non-binary experience um, I feel like I understand neo-pronouns a little bit better now. I also really liked the kind of exploration of the fact that the author was also confused and a lot of times doesn't necessarily know why he feels a certain way necessarily, just that things either feel right or feel wrong. Um, so yeah, I thought that was a really interesting book and I really enjoyed it and would recommend it. I also um, started, what was it called? It's a book about black performance called A Little Devil in America by Hanif Adurakib. And so I do think I'm going to like it, but I have to kind of switch my expectations. So I did this for the prompt of like just kind of exploring and finding something that looks interesting. And so I didn't research it. And my assumption was that it was going to be a nonfiction book kind of about black performance, like the history of performance across different different art, different uh, media. Um, but it's not. It's a collection of essays. So I read the first essay last night. And as I was reading, it became very, <laughs> very apparent very quickly that, oh, this is not going to be what I thought it was, which is fine. I just now have to kind of like switch my brain into, okay, this is... Uh, a series of essays. So the first essay, he talks a lot about dance and he um, touches a little bit on during the, um, I think right before the depression and during the depression, dance marathons and kind of like how that came up and talked a lot about like uh, Soul Train and how that was personally meaningful to him and how it was meaningful like in a grander scale as well. But 
but they are personal essays, so it's it's I think the the balance is skewed a little bit more to that. <laughs> check in as much as I wanted to or vlog as much as I wanted to because I ended up being very busy this week. I did watch The Fugitive last night and I thought it was really great. Peak early 90s like action movie, peak Harrison Ford. I thought the like sleuthing element trying to uncover this mystery about who killed his wife was really well done. I loved the Kind of like evasion of the law like cat and mouse type of element and i loved the acting i thought harrison ford and tommy lee jones were just like loved it um i didn't have time to watch hamlet because that's a bit of a long production um but i'll watch that sometime this week but i did want to update on regeneration because i'm about at the yeah about the halfway point right now and it's really really good so i didn't mention this earlier because it honestly kind of slipped my mind but the reason that a gender librarian had talked about this is she's doing her PhD on Wilfred Owen the World War One poet and he's like one of my favorite poets I love his stuff and so I forgot though that he's in this so um this is fiction but the author has basically fictionalized or imagined um the meeting between Wilfred Owen and uh, Siegfried Sassoon, who is another character, um, one of the main characters in this book. And he was also a poet and he mentored uh, Wilfred Owen. And so they're at this war hospital together. Sassoon's the one who had written this declaration basically condemning the war and he sent to this war hospital instead of being like court-martialed or imprisoned. Um, and it's, a lot of it is about him, but there's also all these side characters, other soldiers, and it's really interesting, like, their dynamic, their different dynamics with the psychiatrist, Dr. Rivers, and they all kind of have this underlying problem due to, like, the horrors of war, but all of their problems are so very different and their feelings and like philosophy on the war is all very different. And yeah, it's just really interesting looking at how they're all struggling in one way or another internally, but they're all struggling in, in slightly different ways. Anyway, I think the character work in here is really good. I think the dialogue is really good. Um, so yeah, that's where I'm at for that. I haven't really made progress. On anything else. I didn't pick up anything else to um, do any of the other prompts because like I said I just ended up getting really busy. So I am going to close it off here. Happy Valentine's Day. I hope you are all doing well. Thank you as always so much for watching and we'll chat soon. Take care.